All right, all right. Welcome, welcome back, back, boys, boys, and girls, girls. This is the drive through remix. We're going to try this video again, part two. Going for accuracy this time. Welcome to 10 3, the dot product. As always, this lesson is brought to you by the deli. Hungry? Stop by the deli. Get yourself a toasted wrap, low carb, full of egg whites, bacon, and vegetarian sausage with some chorizo. All right, the dot products. Um, how do you find a dot product? Here we have uh, two sample random vectors. Let's imagine we're in three space, and we got some some vector uh, v. Now, granted, it's impossible to tell where that orientation is, so just don't worry about it too much. And then let's say we have some vector u that's got um, you know more magnitude. And these vectors have a relationship. I want you to understand that even though we are in three dimensions, V and U are in two dimensions. Okay? They are in the same plane. So whether we are talking about three component vectors or two component vectors, these vectors will always be in the same plane, so we treat them like angles. Okay? To find U dot V, we just add up the product of their components. So it's x1 times x2 plus y1 times y2 plus z1 times z2. Okay? That's the dot product. That's how you calculate the dot product. Just stay with us. Eventually, you're going to find this to be useful and relatively interesting. Relatively. Relatively. So let's take a look at some dot products here. 3 times 5 is 15. Plus, remember, the dot product is a scalar. It's just a number. It's not a vector. Okay, so 15 plus 5 times 2 is 10. This dot product is 25. Okay? Um, negative 4 times 5 is negative 20 plus 0. This dot product is negative 20. And 0 times 5 is 0 plus 5 times 0 is 0 this dot product is zero. So the first thing I want you to understand is that a dot product is a measure of compatibility. Okay? And if the resultant product of two um, vectors that are dotted is positive, then you know that these vectors have things in common. They're traveling in the same direction, and therefore the angle between them will always be acute. So the first thing you learn, if the dot product is positive, the angle will be acute. Here, these two vectors are, they have their own agendas. They're pulling away from each other. They don't only, not only do they not have a lot in common, but they believe the opposite things. Okay? Um, here's Mr. Gaffigan, and, and maybe here is, uh, I don't know, um, I don't know. Me. But me and Gaff actually go hand in hand on a lot of things. This is clearly an obtuse angle. Notice the dot product is negative. So if the dot product between two vectors is, ob is negative, then the angle between those two vectors is obtuse. And finally, here these vectors have nothing in common. This vector is only into the right-left stuff. This vector is only into the up-down stuff. And that makes these two vectors perpendicular to each other. So if the dot product is 0, then the angle between the vectors is perpendicular, or 90 degrees. OK. So now let's get into the geometric interpretation of the dot product. This is some heavy stuff. OK. So um, let's just actually start with an example. Let's say that this uh, vector here is 5, comma 0, okay? And then I want to say that this vector is, let's say it's 4, comma 4, okay? We'll call this u and v. u dot v 
you should already know this is going to be positive. Okay, it's 20 plus 0, so u dot v is 20. Okay, now, you might be thinking, well, what does that number 20 represent? What if it was 40? What if it was 100? What if it was 4? Well, the actual dot product number doesn't tell you anything. But if you compare it to the magnitude of the original vectors, you're going to learn something that's going to end up being important. So, just for giggles, watch what happens if you do u dot v over the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. So now we're comparing our product to the product of the vectors. So this is a scalar, that's a scalar. This is kind of like, um, uh, if you will, um, almost prorating the dot product. So it's going to be 20, which is u dot v. The magnitude of this is uh, 25. The magnitude of u is 25. And the magnitude of v is, uh, let's see, um, the square root of 32, so 4 radical 2. So that ends up being 20 on u dot v. 20 over this is not 25 that's 5 gosh that makes me feel better okay 20 over 20 radical 2 which is radical 2 over 2 now hmm I recognize that well hold on this was a 45 degree angle and the dot product over the magnitude of the products gave us radical 2 over 2. Well, what happens if we got a 30 degree angle? So how does a 30 degree, well let's make it, a, well, let's do 60 because I already screwed up 30 on the original track. Let's do 60. So that would be um, right 1 up radical 3, right? So let's say that this vector here was represented by 4 comma 0. I just made it um, 5 comma 0, the same vector we had before. And then let's say that this vector um, in red is just 5 radical, um, 5 comma 5 radical 3. The angle between those should be 60 degrees. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so we'll call this u. We'll call this v. u dot v is going to be uh, 25 plus 0. Uh, magnitude of u is 5. Magnitude of v. Let's see, it's uh, the square root of 25 plus 75, which is 10, okay? So what does that give you? 25 over 50, which is 1 half. Well, the cosine of 60 is 1 half. So what we just found is this really, really fun, important fact. The cosine of the angle between the vectors is u dot v over the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. Take notes. All right, where are we going next? I'm about ready to show you the projection of one vector onto another. Uh, but I might take a risk here and prove prove this for you. I'm gonna I'm gonna prove this for you. All right, so here we have. Let's make a triangle. So here we have a vector u and a vector v. Now, um, if you think about what this is right there. All right, so here's what I want you to imagine. There's V. So you can consider this 
this to be u minus v. Let me show you how that would work. Okay, u minus v is equal to u plus a negative v. If I took my u and then at the end of u, if I, if I copied v in the negative, here's minus v right here. If I went to the bottom of my u and extended it in the minus v, okay, what you would be left with is that segment right there. And now you can maybe see that parallelogram, okay? So this vector right here. Remember, vectors do not have a location. So I could just kind of like cut this vector and bring it up and paste it right there. And that's how I get that triangle. So now I'm going to erase things, and I want you to understand why this triangle is made up of u, v, and u minus v. Okay? All right, well, let's call this theta. Okay? And we can use the law of cosines to say that the magnitude of u minus v squared is equal to the magnitude of v squared plus the magnitude of u squared minus 2 u v cosine theta. That is the law of cosines. Okay? That probably makes you want to throw up thinking about it, but that's the law of cosines. Now, let's take this right here and let's expand it using FOIL. So the magnitude of u minus v squared is u minus v times u minus v. And that's going to give you u squared minus 2 uv plus v squared. Okay. Now, if we take this and substitute it in for that, we're going to get u squared minus 2 uv plus v squared is equal to, now I'm just going to take the magnitude out here to clean things up. That's, that's kind of the insinuation is that these are going to be magnitudes because we're squaring them. And then I'll put them back in at the end. It's just too many lines to draw. All right, look. Well, bam. Well, bam. Okay. You get um, negative 2 uv is negative 2 uv cosine of theta. Okay. Uh-oh. Got it. I shouldn't have canceled out my magnitudes. And so the one it leaves you with is we can cancel those. Cosine theta is equal to u dot v. Um, this was a dot product here. And these were magnitudes over magnitude of u times magnitude of v. All right, so there's your little proof, in case you didn't believe me. Not a, not a great proof, but that's how it works, okay? Understanding that, you know, will help you move forward a little bit. All right, finally, the last two pieces of this section, and that is the projection of one vector onto another vector, okay? 
So, well, let's, let's make this one even smaller, actually, just to show you that that can happen. This is U. This is V. This is the angle in between them. Okay? Imagine that there was a flashlight up here. Shining a light, a green light, if you will, because I don't feel like down, creating a shadow that I'll draw in red. This red vector, it's a vector, is the projection of vector u on to vector v. That's how you read that. The projection um, of u onto v. Okay, now. You can probably sense that we're going to use cosine to figure out that. Like you can see the right triangle being formed. Okay? So if I did u times the cosine of theta, that is going to be a number or a scalar. That is the amount or the magnitude of u that's traveling in the horizontal direction in this case. But we don't want it to be a scalar. We want it to be a vector. We want to represent this red vector as a vector. Okay, so what do we need to do? Well, we need to take this scalar number and we need to multiply it by a vector in the direction of v. But the problem is if we multiply it by v, then the, the, how much magnitude v has is going to affect our red one. So we need to make v 1. So we're going to multiply it by, um, well, let's just change this, by a unit vector, which is v over the magnitude of v. Okay? So here's a simple one. The projection of u on to v is equal to u cosine theta times a unit vector in the direction of v. That's what you should kind of know. Okay. Now, remember from our last slide that cosine of theta is equal to u dot v over magnitude of u times magnitude of v, okay? So that means the projection uh, of u onto v is going to be u times u dot v over magnitude of u times magnitude of v times v over magnitude of v. Well, look. Um, Those are going to cancel. Hold on. This goes U. Okay, so those are gone. Um, don't you laugh at me back there. I'm just joking. What do I got screwed up here? There shouldn't be anything screwed up here. Okay, we're good. We're good. And so we'll rewrite that as u dot v over magnitude of v squared times v. Look, I find this to be extremely complicated and hard to remember. So that's why I just do this one. Okay? Hopefully you kind of followed along with that. All right, so one more thing to show you, and then this video will be over. This takes care of the entire section. So if you have, if you can think about um, this vector v, now let's say that u is not necessarily more, um, it doesn't have a bigger magnitude right here in pink. OK, 
Okay, so that is the projection of U onto V. Well, if I came up with this one right here, that um, is, represent, is represents the vector component of U orthogonal to V. How do we find it? Well, here's what's kind of the cool thing. If we just called the projection of U onto V, if we called that W, and if you think about how vector geometry works, the green one, which we'll call W2, is simply equal to u minus w1. If I went u and then did went a negative direction of w1, then the resultant vector would be this one. And notice that's the same thing as w2. So that is how we're going to find the vector component orthogonal to V. We're going to find the projection, that one, the projection of U onto W, and we're going to subtract that from U, and that's going to give us our orthogonal component. Things are getting real in here. 22 minutes. Boom!